This video is going to explain some details about the absolute jump instruction of the MIPS instruction set. Let's begin with the assumption that we have byte addressed memory. That means that each one of these boxes in memory here is one byte in size. So this is a byte, and this is a byte, and this is a byte. Let's suppose that we are currently fetching from the instruction located at address 1000000. And recall that we have a register, a 32-bit value, which we call a program counter, or PC, which stores this address. So every cycle that we fetch an instruction, we look in this PC, which is a 32-bit value, and we use that as the address to index into memory. Each one of these yellow boxes is one byte in size. So you can see that I've divided each byte with a little green line, but the larger black lines are indicating 4-byte or 32-bit sequences. Let's assume that the instruction I'm about to fetch, located at this address, is an absolute jump instruction. The absolute jump instruction is a J-type instruction, which tells us that the first six bits of the instruction are the opcode, and the remaining 26 bits are an immediate. In this case, the 26-bit immediate is telling us where we want to jump to. In other words, the PC that we fetch after we fetch this instruction is not just going to be PC plus 4, it's actually going to be the address indicated inside of this absolute jump instruction. Let's go ahead and place this instruction in memory so we can see exactly where all the bits go. Please notice that each box in program memory contains 8 bits. The program counter is a 32-bit value. We're using hex notation for the PC, which is why we have an X in front of it. Every address in the MIPS instruction set is 32 bits long. Now we want to use the absolute jump instruction to update the program counter. And we'd love to be able to tell it exactly what 32 bits we want to change it to. Unfortunately, the instruction itself is 32 bits long which means we couldn't possibly contain a 32-bit immediate inside a 32-bit instruction, not when the first six bits are used up by the opcode. We're going to have to figure out where to get the remaining six bits for our address. The first thing that we're going to do is make the observation that instructions in program memory are always four byte aligned. What does this mean? It means that if you know where one instruction starts, you know that the instruction that follows it will be exactly four bytes later in program memory. The one that follows that instruction will be again four bytes later in program memory. And the pattern continues. Notice that all the instructions have addresses that end in zero, zero. Okay, all of these have zero, zero here for the bottom two bits. This means that our PC always ends in zero, zero. And so if we're trying to construct a 32-bit PC value, we can always begin by just making the two least significant bits zero. So now we have 28 bits. We still need our address to be 32 bits long. And so now we're just going to make a simplifying assumption, which is to say that if you are at a particular address, you are probably not going to jump too far away from where you are. So where are you currently? You're currently at PC. And under normal circumstances, you would take the PC and you would put it into a little plus four adder. And that's how you would update your PC. In this case, what we're going to do is take the value of PC plus four and inspect the top four bits. We're going to limit the absolute jump instruction and say that it can only jump to addresses that share the first four bits with the PC plus four that would be calculated from its location. And this is how we construct a 32-bit address out of an initial 26-bit immediate. And when we encounter an absolute jump instruction like this, then we're going to have to create another option for what the PC could be and we're going to use a control signal here that will say, if this is an absolute jump, then instead of updating the PC with PC plus four, I want to update it with the address embedded in this absolute jump instruction. The most common question 
that people ask after learning about the absolute jump instruction is, what if I want to jump really far away and I don't want the upper four bits to be the same as PC plus four? Well, the MIPS instruction set has other jump instructions you can use, and you'll have to use one of those. For example, you could use the jump register instruction. You would place the entire 32-bit address that you'd like to jump to in a register, and then you use the jump register instruction instead of the absolute jump instruction.